Hi there, this is Sean, the Honest Book Reviewer, with another book review. If you like Harlan Coben, especially his standalone thrillers, I think you'll like this book. It's written by Linwood Barclay. It's called Find You First. It was written in 2021. It is quite a good thriller, not perfect. There are some things in there that, you know, could have been done better. But it is enough of a thriller to make me want to read more from this author, and it's the first book I've read by Linwood Barclay. Let's talk about the book in more detail now. We have a few different threads in this book, and they're both quite simple, and then as they're stitched together, it becomes quite complex, and the author's done a great job in stitching together all these threads seamlessly. The first thread, and the main thread, is about a guy called Miles Cookson. He's wealthy, and he finds out that he's dying. He's got Huntington's disease, so he doesn't know how long he's got to live, but he knows he can't be cured. He hasn't got a family, hasn't got kids, so at the start, he just thinks he's going to give money away to charity, and some to his brother, who works for his company. Then he starts to think about his younger days, and in his younger days, when he was first trying to get money together to upgrade his computers to start his own business, he used to donate to fertility clinics, and he's wondering if he has any kids out there. The reason he's wondering is he wants those children, if there are any out there, to know that they've got a possibility of having Huntington's disease. Then he also wants to put them in his will and give them some money. But also just to let them know that they can get a DNA test and find out if they will get sick in the future. As that's going on, we have another storyline that involves two assassins and they're hired to target people on a list. And it seems like at the start, these people are at random. And we see them at the very start targeting one person and killing him and then disposing of the body, but also cleaning up where this person lives, taking all his clothes, all his possessions, cleaning everything with bleach, kind of wiping this person from existence, from their home. But there's a downside to this storyline, I have felt. So the author tried to inject it with a bit of humour, and too much humour, in my opinion. It took away that sinister feel, that threatening feel. So where I should have felt suspense and tension, I didn't feel enough of that. So I just wished the author didn't try to inject so much humour into these two killers, because it did ruin the story for me a bit in this storyline. The third thread is about a guy called Jeremy, who's mega wealthy, but he has a big secret. And the author's just taken Jeffrey Epstein, basically, and called him Jeremy in this book. It's a direct carbon copy, basically, of a Jeffrey Epstein character. How does this character Jeremy tie in with the other two threads? with the two killers, plus also the threat about Miles, who's trying to find children he may have. I won't tell you exactly how they all stitch together, because that gives too much away, but they do stitch together quite well, and the author's done a great job in that. The author's also done a great job in the characters. The characters are mainly very believable and very well crafted. It's just some of the things in the story that I didn't like, like injecting their humour into the killers, and just some of the things that go on are a bit too far-fetched. You have to really suspend reality quite a bit when you're reading this book. And that's okay, because a lot of books you have to do that, but in this book I thought you had to do it just too much and a little bit too often. So it did you know, lower the read for me a little bit. I didn't enjoy it as much as I think I would have if there was just a bit less of that stretching reality in this book. One big thing I did like in this book is in the Miles Cookson storyline, he comes across one of his children called Chloe. Chloe is a great character and together they then forge on in this book and they try to investigate to find more children that Miles may have, but they're also trying to solve who's killing some of these people because what they do find out is that the people who are being murdered are also on the list of possible children that Miles has. So it's interesting that's going on because nobody knows who's hired these killers. We suspect we may know, and there are a lot of suspects in the book, and the author's done a great job in just throwing a whole range of suspects at us. There's probably about two or three, maybe four, that it could be. 
and it's so well done, you don't know who it is until towards the very end. And that's a great sign of a great storyteller as well. Miles Cookson is a clever character, well-crafted and quite complex. Despite that storyline where he's trying to find children after donating to a fertility clinic, he's still a good character. What I did like about him is the author made him like an average person, so he wasn't using his influence and his money that often in this book to get his own way. He did once, I can think of, but that's all. So it was really good the author did that, because it just made it that the character had to do things differently and do things more manually to drive the plot forward, and that was really good. Chloe is also a really good character. She's strong, independent, she's also thoughtful and quite caring, but you can also picture this young girl with a bit of chip on her shoulder, just trying to budge through life a bit and trying to make something of herself. And she's so strong, she doesn't want to take any charity from anybody, even though when Miles and Chloe meet, Miles offers to give her money in an inheritance, she refuses. She wants to make her own money and her own life. And that made just such a strong and consistent character. And you can kind of really picture her in this book when you're reading. It's a really good character, really, really good description of her in this book. And the author's done a great job of creating Chloe. I also enjoyed the fact that this character wants to be a documentary filmmaker. And she's making amateur films with her phone, you know, recording her grandfather in a nursing home when she goes to meet him talking about his life. And when she meets up with Miles, she records that. And when she meets up with other people as well in the book, she wants to record her life and make this documentary. I found that quite good for this character, and it just gave this character more substance. Jeremy, who's one of our villains, is a good character, despite the fact that the author basically cloned Jeffrey Epstein. You get a really sinister vibe with Jeremy. You really get to see this almost dual personality character. He comes across, or he hides the fact that he's evil, by coming across as such this good citizen and this very caring person. You see the character snap between this good person and this bad person in the book, when he's manipulating young people into doing what he wants. He can be very nice, then he snaps and gets really angry and really violent sometimes. And that just created this whole sinister vibe with Jeremy. So for a villain, it was a good villain in the book. I did enjoy Find You First, written by Linwood Barclay. It's the first time I've read this author, but I will be reading more in the future. I want to try to get them all and read them all. It reminds me so much of Harlan Coben. Even though Harlan Coben can be a bit hit and miss, I'm not sure about this author yet. So being the first book I've read by this author, I think I need to read more to get a firmer picture in my mind of what this author writes like what his books are like. I rate this a 3.5 out of 5. The thriller element wasn't so great as I expected, just because there's a little bit of humour in there that I didn't think was necessary. But the characters were really well done, and just the way he was able to stitch together those different threads in the story so seamlessly shows me this author knows how to write a good book. I do review a lot of thrillers on my channel. If you don't want to miss out on new videos coming up, check out my channel and subscribe. I also have a thriller playlist on my channel. It should be on your screen now.